Okay, I think we will go ahead and get started. Um, I'm so happy to have you all here with us. Hello. Um, thank you for joining us for this Cal Week information session for both the conservation and resource studies and the ecosystem management and forestry majors. Um, you're lucky enough to share one wonderful advisor. And so that's why we combine these sessions. My name is Megan Daraspini. I use pronouns she, her, and I'm another academic advisor with the Rouser College of Natural Resources. I will be serving as moderator for this session um, and also assisting me and basically doing all behind the scenes and sometimes in front of the scenes coordination um, is our intake advisor, Craig Crossley, and I'd love to have him introduce himself as well. Excellent. Thanks, Megan. Um, hi, friends. Uh, my name is Craig Crossley, he, him pronouns. Um, I am the intake advisor. Uh, I've been here for two years in this position. Um, I do everything kind of between connecting you with your advisor, as well as um, answering general college policies, emails about deadlines and um, internship opportunities. I manage our social media account, uh, CNR Advising on Instagram, as well as uh, edit and maintain our website. Uh, I send out weekly emails with uh, new internship opportunities and uh, research positions, um, student, uh, student organization events, and uh, kind of everything else under the sun. Uh, so you'll see me a lot during your studies here. Uh, sometimes I'm doing stuff behind the scene or behind an email or I'm there in the resource center uh, right in front of you. So uh, congratulations. Welcome to Berkeley um, and nice to meet you. Cheers. Yay, thanks, Craig. And then before we jump into webinar things, um, maybe if you've attended other sessions, you might have heard a land acknowledgement, which is something that um, we feel is important to include at our sessions. So I'll go ahead and read our land acknowledgement. We recognize that Berkeley sits on the territory of Huichin, Huichin, I apologize for that, the ancestral and unceded land of the Chichenyo Ohlone, the successors of the historic and sovereign Verona Band of Alameda County. This land was and continues to be of great importance to the Ohlone people. We recognize that every member of the Berkeley community has benefited and continues to benefit from the use and occupation of this land since the institution's founding in 1868. Consistent with our values of community, inclusion, and diversity, we have a responsibility to acknowledge and make visible the relationship to Native peoples. As members of the Berkeley community, it is vitally important that we not only recognize the history of the land on which we stand, but also that we recognize that the Mukemwa Ohlone people are alive and flourishing members of the Berkeley and broader Bay Area communities today. Um, and this land acknowledgement was created by UC Berkeley Native American Student Development and the Mukwekma Ohlone tribe. And we will post some links in the chat for additional information. And thank you for, for listening. Um, and then to start off with uh, webinar information session things, um, I'll discuss a little bit with you the outline for today's session before introducing our panelists. Um, as you may have noticed, you can see us, but we won't be able to see you or hear you for this session um, because we're in webinar format. We've learned all the formats of Zoom. Um, if you have questions, please use the Q&A feature at the bottom of your Zoom screen and Craig will make sure that we see them and help us coordinate answers to questions as we go. Um, we'll start off with three initial questions for our panelists. And then after those three questions, we'll begin answering questions from you all. Um, so get those ready. Um, we're also recording the session and chat log um, and hope to post a recording to our Cal Week website later this week. So you can go back and review um, or if you don't make the whole thing. Lastly, at the end of the session, we will post contact information in the chat window just in case we miss a question or you come up with something um, that you'd like to ask after the session. Now that we've gotten those logistics out of the way, um, let me once again welcome you to our Cal Week information session for conservation and resource studies and ecosystem management and forestry. We may start shortening those for, to CRS and EMF just to <laughs> save ourselves some syllables. <laughs> um, and for those of you who are new ad admits, which we assume many of you are and um, your supporters and family, um, a huge congratulations on your admission to Berkeley. We're so excited for you. Um, and we hope that you find this session helpful and that we'll see you physically on the Berkeley campus in in the fall. Um, so today we have panelists to talk about the conservation and resource studies and ecosystem management and forestry majors. So we have a major advisor, um, the major advisor, and then two current students. We hope that there are a couple of other students that might be joining us along the way. So we'll hope to see them. Um, first, we have Sarah Hamilton, the academic advisor for both conservation and resource studies and ecosystem management and forestry. And we'd love to hear her say hello. 
Hello, hi everybody. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Sarah Hamilton and I use pronouns she, her. I've been at Rouser College Advisor for about three years now and I've been an advisor overall for about seven years. I love working with students and supporting you guys on your academic and personal journeys and I'm really getting forward, looking forward to getting to know all of you. Um, just some about me as a human. I was born and raised in Napa, California, where my family still lives. And I was actually a transfer student once upon a time at the Napa Valley Community College, and then moved on to um, CSU Chico, where I earned my bachelor's and master's degree in psychology. And just recently, I moved from San Francisco across the Bay to Berkeley, so I'm a little closer, in January. And um, I'm excited to explore a new area filled with amazing food and beautiful hikes. Um, I also enjoy traveling internationally. And once the pandemic subsides, I plan to travel to Bali for my honeymoon in October. So very excited for that. And we will try to fill her shoes in her absence um, while she is gone. Um, thank you so much, Sarah. That's great. And then um, we do have two of our current um, peer advisors, pals for short. We're so lucky to have them talk a little bit about their experience. So we have Isaac and Nicole. Um, and then we hope that a couple of our other students will join us in just a little bit. Um, so we'll have them introduce themselves. Um, we'll go ahead and start with Isaac. And then, um, and then Nicole, we'd love to hear from you next. Hi everyone, thank you for being here today. Uh, my name is Isaac Aguilar, I use he, him pronouns. I am currently a junior studying ecosystem management and forestry, um, double majoring in molecular environmental biology, and also pursuing a minor in GIS, which is geographic information science and technology. Um, I'm from San Diego and on campus, um, I'm involved in different organizations. Um, I'm a part of the Leaflet, which is a publication online um, hosted by the Student Environmental Resource Center. Um, I'm also involved in the Students of Color Environmental Collective and the Wildlife Society at Berkeley. Um, so a lot of like environmentally related um, student organizations. So there's a lot of different ways to get involved with the community at Berkeley. Um, I also am a part of um, undergrad research projects where there are a lot of other opportunities um, and you'll probably hear a little bit more on in this panel as well. Um, but yeah, thank you all for being here. Hey y'all, my name is Nicole and I use the she, her pronouns. Um, I'm a senior studying conservation and resource studies and my area of interest is on wildlife conservation and management. Um, at Cal, I'm part of Phi Alpha Delta Pre-Law Fraternity, um, as well as ESA Seeds. And I do some research through the Zero Waste Lab currently. And previously I've done um, research through URAP and SPUR on um, comparative phylogeography of lizards. Nicole is our lizard queen. Um, great, thank you both so much um, for being here and for introducing yourselves. We're really lucky to have you. Um, and then a note for this info session that because Sarah does advise for both majors, um, we'll be covering them hopefully both in equal measure through the answers to our questions. So, um, but of course, if there's a major specific question, there may be more to handle on that side of things. Um, so we do have a few questions that we'll start off with. Um, I'll list them now so that you can be thinking about them as we go. Uh, and then of course, we'll have time for your questions. So first we'll ask Sarah to describe the majors, um, both um, CRS and EMF, Conservation Resource Studies, Ecosystem Management. Um, next, we'll ask our pals, our um, students to talk about what it's like to be a student in their major, um, and then tell us about their favorite class or experience in that major. And then finally, we'll start with our pals and, and hear from them what they hope to do after Berkeley. So work or grad school or other things. Um, and then we'll ask Sarah, um, um, for additional information on other happenings that alumni get up to once they graduate with one of these majors. Um, so let's start with question one. So Sarah, um, can you describe to us what are these majors? What are conservation resource studies and ecosystem management and forestry? And then what are their unique course requirements? Yeah, happy to. Uh, so let's start with conservation and resource studies or CRS for short. Uh, CRS is an individualized interdisciplinary program designed for students interested in environmental issues and the interactions between the natural and social sciences. Students can explore natural resources, population, energy, technology, environmental justice, and cultural values from course offerings across campus. Um, then we have ecosystem management and forestry or EMF for short, which focuses on the conservation and restoration of Earth's natural resources through hands-on field study 
of ecology, stewardship, and the management of forests, woodlands, and grassland ecosystems. The program offers two specializations to choose from, forestry specialization and natural resource management specialization. Students who choose to specialize in forestry qualify to take the registered professional foresters licensing exam in California upon graduation. The course requirements for both majors include two semesters of English, a semester of biology focusing in plant ecology and evolution, and two semesters of environmental and social interaction studies. The CRS major specifically requires one semester of math in either statistics or calculus, three breadth classes covering physical sciences and humanities, and then before starting their upper division coursework, students take SPM 90, which is introduction to the CRS major, in which they receive rigorous guidance in planning their individualized major coursework for their junior and senior year. During their third and fourth year, CRS students take eight classes that align with their area of interest, which is mapped out in SPM 90, as well as an environmental problem solving course and a senior capstone. The EMF major requires two semesters of calculus, one semester of statistics, one semester of chemistry, and lower division courses covering economics, earth science, and geographic information systems mapping. During their junior and senior years, EMF students typically complete a field component. They have the opportunity to go to our UC summer forestry camp in the Sierra Nevada mountains, or to Morea, a research program in the French Polynesian Islands. Students can also expect to take ecology and resource management classes. Then additional coursework varies depending on their specialization. The forestry specialization provides students with the tools and knowledge to feel confident in the timber or conservation forestry industries. And they take very specific coursework in order to do that. Uh, the natural resource management track provides more flexibility in their classes and the opportunity to specialize in areas like wildlife conservation, geographic information systems, watershed management, and much more. Great. That was great. Thank you for that. And then um, I'm going to direct our next question to our pals, but I'd love to just pause briefly. Um, we've been lucky to be joined by Teodora, who's one of our current pals um, and a CRS major. Uh, and so I'd love to ask um, her to introduce herself. And um, Teodora, if you could um, tell us your name, pronouns, and some of the things you're involved in on campus. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you for having me. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I just came back. I, I just woke up from my vaccine. Uh, it knocked me out and I, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> um, I, um, my name is Tudora Reyes. I am a conservation and resource study major um, with my areas of interest in data science and geographic information systems um, with a focus on environmental justice. And I also have a minor in um, public policy as well. And they all have an intersection and I'm happy to talk about that a bit further along. Um, our, our meeting. I um, also am involved in the Students of Color Environmental Collective. Um, they're a really great um, community to be a part of. Um, Isaac is also part of uh, that group as well. And I um, am just so happy to be here. And thank you for having me. <laughs> Yay, thank you. And thank you for being a trooper, even though you're um, doing your part for science and health. <laughs> so thank you for, for joining us, Teodora. Um, okay, great. So this next question um, we'll direct to our peers, um, to our pals. What is it like to be a student in your major and what has been your favorite experience or class? Um, and then if you could just, yeah, remind us which major you are in so that we know who you are. Um, I'll go ahead and start with Nicole for this one and then we'll go to Isaac and then Teodora. Um, so, like I mentioned before, I'm a CRS major, and I love how interdisciplinary my major is, um, and you can really tailor your interests and your coursework to what you're passionate about. So, since I'm passionate about wildlife conservation and management, I've taken a lot of classes um, involving, like, natural history of the vertebrates, where I get to learn about um, all the different vertebrate organisms that are found like near Berkeley and we go out into the field as well. And it's a really cool experience to get to learn from um, the professors who are experts. And like some of them have even described their own species and like, it's super cool. Um, I just love how supportive my major is. Um, we have faculty mentors in our major who help guide us along 
um, our academic journey at Berkeley as well. And our academic team is really amazing. Like it's unparalleled to other colleges. Yeah, so I, um, my major is ecosystem management and forestry. I'm actually doing the natural resource management uh, specialization track um, with also a similar emphasis in, in wildlife conservation and management. Um, what I really enjoy about the ecosystem management and forestry major is, again, you have that flexibility to uh, design your um, design like the concentration of the classes that you're interested in. And a lot of the courses in the major do have an emphasis on a on the field research experience um, that you can get in other majors as well. It, it all depends on how you want to um, arrange your classes while you're at Berkeley. And so one of my uh, favorite experiences was actually in one of the lower division biology classes, Bio 1B. Um, there's a special field lab that you can take um, in, in conjunction with the course where I got to go on like various field trips with other students in the lab. We went to like Point Reyes, uh, Tilden and just different areas to learn different field research techniques. Um, and eventually we got to apply that knowledge towards creating our own field research project. Um, so that course was really like my first introduction to hands-on field ecological research. And it really inspired me to, to, delve, to dive more into that realm of research um, where, the, where you will find so many opportunities on campus. Um, the EMF major is one of the smallest majors on campus. Uh, you will definitely um, come across every now and then about another person who's in the major. And I like every person I come across in the major, like I remember their names because uh, there's just like so few of us, but it, it is a really nice tight knit community. Um, a lot of students are involved in forestry club, whether they're in the forestry track the natural resource track or even other majors are, as well are invited to come. Um, and it's just a really great community for students to share like their experiences and also just talk about um, other things that they're interested in, whether it's classes, jobs and other things. Uh, so the EMF major is really a small tight knit community. Um, and I've really enjoyed that about um, during my experience here at Berkeley. um i just turned my camera on and i'm so sorry that my face looks like a bit uh i had a crazy day my cat also scratched my eye this morning so it's um just it's funny it's fine my eye is good it's just um a bit swollen but <laughs> um i my like i mentioned earlier um i am a conservation and research study major and I have, i've had a very similar experience like nicole and isaac with it being very interdisciplinary um and that has been a part of like my overall experience at cal um the interdisciplinary approach to my major um i came in really passionate about the environmental justice movement and I took a data science course um, my freshman year at Cal, and I um, became aware of like the power of data science and these geographic information system tools ha can have within the environmental justice movement. Um, and more specifically, these tools um, within data science can involve um, AI, like data science, AI, like data science involves um, computer science, so like. AI systems um, and, and and within geographic information systems, um, data analysis of land use um, management, and uh, um, into industrial um, facilities that are toxic to communities are also like a part of like what you would analyze within um, my areas of focus. Um, and in my time at Berkeley, I um, have taken a lot of environmental justice and social justice courses that have a focus on the intersections of technology and access to um, access to technology. And that's something another focus that I am very passionate about because I, I, I lack that um, access coming into Berkeley and I've definitely found a way to to, to, to um, gain that confidence to, attack, to tackle these technologies that are not, you know, usually there for me. And I don't really, under, I've never really understood what they were until, you know, my senior year, I'm like still learning. And um, that's a whole part of my, my journey and process at Berkeley is just learning how to use these, tech, um, my major for my future. And that is, um, I 
plan to be a community organizer uh, full time after I graduate. And that's like really how that ties into my major um, fighting and using these uh, tools for the environmental justice movement um, through computing and um, geospatial technology. Um, I haven't done any specific research at Berkeley, um, but I really hope to um, dive into that once I'm out, out of Berkeley um, and I plan to go to and, and continue my education outside of Berkeley for that. Um, but yes, the, the, it's very interdisciplinary. <laughs> I love CRS. I feel like you're so busy already being a full-time community organizer anyways, Theodora. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, I actually would like to comment my favorite, one of my favorite classes has been engineering um, 157 AC. It's called environment. Um, sorry, I'm like just blinked out of my mind. <laughs> it's called environment, engineering environment and society. And it's a course that um, allows you to, to do field work within the, the engineering and um, intersection of the environment. So whatever skills you have, you'll be able to be partnered with a, um, a local um, organization that is fighting environmental or other type of, um, you know, um, whatever missions they have within the environmental justice movement or engineering um, for social justice. And yeah, that's been one of my favorite classes because I was able to work with um, Green Action, which is a non environmental nonprofit located um, in, outside of the, the San Francisco Bay that has been heavily impacted um, by the histories of um, and the environmental injustices located in the Bay Area. So super, super cool <laughs> to take a field study course as well in Berkeley. Yeah, thank you for that. And I really like, I appreciated the, the themes, right? The experiential learning that all three of you referenced, like all of these opportunities to get out and do the work and um, and then also the interdisciplinary, like really being able to tie in lots of pieces um, to be able to um, create a field of study that speaks to you and is also having a big impact, you know, locally and um, in the world. So thank you for, for that, friends. That was really great. Um, I'm so inspired. Um, and then um, the next question um, that we will start with before we open everybody up is um, also for the peers to start. Um, and Theodora, you talked a little bit about this, so maybe we'll start with you uh, to continue. Um, just talking about what profession or potential graduate studies. So if you want to expand a little bit on the community organizing you want to do when you graduate. Um, and yeah, anything else that any of you are hoping to pursue after you leave Berkeley. Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, like we've been mentioning um, earlier that, that CRS is a very interdisciplinary major and is a very individual um, uh, for in, in terms of um, job opportunities, I always like to say it's a very individual um, major that could help you build skills to go into specific job um, opportunities. Uh, mine, and I can elaborate on the community organizing, I um, my my job is a non works. I work at a nonprofit environmental justice um, organization that works on impacting policy, um, art, and um, like and just like resource sharing. Um, and that involves like, and a lot of uh, movements involve um, needing to have like the skills that um, involve like data science and the future technologies that are are growing in our. Um, and I, I guess I'm gonna use the word datafied world. Um, it's the thing I'm learning actually right now in my class. Um, it's like, uh, it's called data ethics, data C104. Um, you learn about the intersection of data and the histories it has with their in, in the intervention um, today with our histories today. And yeah, um, I, that, that's, I'll be using the skills that I, I've had with data science and geographic information systems and like really random places in my work field when um, it, it needs to be um, like data analysis um, will be either really helpful when um, we're looking at environmental uh, reports that are done on um, land that is toxic. Like for example, we haven't gotten, uh, uh, what is it, sorry, um, an environmental, um, land report on toxic, faci toxic facilities in the Pacoima, the San Fernando Valley, such as the Valley Generating Station. Um, once we have that data available, um, people who are 
outside of the typical system are able to use that data to analyze it and um, strengthen like our arguments so again like of the environmental justices that are occurring um, and that's a part of like the nonprofit work that is done in um, community organizing um, and yeah I um, I, I will leave the, the more comment to Isaac and, Kim, and Nicole, um, but yes. That's great, thank you for that. Yeah, and then we'll we'll hand it off to Nicole as our other current graduating senior since her um, post-Berkeley life is very close. <laughs> so what will you be up to, Nicole? <clears throat> yeah, um, so I'm gonna be working as a field biologist for a couple of years and then hopefully pursue law school. Um, yeah, those are my plans. <laughs> Great. Will you be in the Bay Area or somewhere further away at, in your field biology work? Um, so I'm going to be based out of Oakland and a lot of the work I'll be doing is like in the wetlands or the natural reserves um, along the coast. So I'm really excited for that opportunity. That's great. All right. Thank you both. And then Isaac, what are you thinking post Berkeley? What will that hopefully look like for you? Yeah, so I'm really hoping to get a position similar to what Nicole will be doing. Um, definitely after graduating, I'm hoping to find um, other field biology positions, wildlife um, biologist positions to get experience. I'm really interested in just like traveling and learning like about different ecosystems and learning about like new wildlife. Um, I really want to do that for like travel around for a couple of years after graduating before I decide if Grad school is something that I'm interested in or not, but at this moment, I'm definitely uh, looking forward to just being outside as much as possible, admiring wildlife and different ecosystems. Hopefully around the world would be really cool, um, but if not, just as far away as um, I can get to and just learn a bunch of uh, about new animals and ecosystems. Um, it, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to that. Love that. Well, Nicole can get you in with her organization to start and that'll be local and then you can branch out from there. Um, okay, great. Thank you so much. We're so excited for those lives that you will lead after Berkeley. Um, and then Sarah, um, if you could help us also understand what are some of the other things that you would do with either of these majors after graduating? Yeah, so, um, you know, what can you do with a um, CRS major? Well, given that every student's major is individualized, they go on to naturally a variety of careers, uh, both in the public and private sector, as well as graduate and law school. Some common career paths include government agencies and branches, including the National Park Service, uh, the US Department of Agriculture, the Environmental Protection Agency. They also go and work in nonprofits focusing in environmental justice, public health and food insecurity, um, environmental education, environmental consulting, lobbying for energy and renewable resources and environmental issues and much, much more. Um, for the ecosystem management and forestry, our students are prepared for a wealth of field and research experience to go into stewardship and resource management in both the private and public sector as well, and many go on to master's and PhD programs. Our EMF students have found wonderful careers in CAL FIRE, uh, forest product management companies like Green Diamond Resource and Collins Wood, uh, the UC Research Forest and the UC Natural Reserve Systems, the National Park Service, the Fish and Wildlife Service, the Bureau of Land Management, the list goes on. <laughs> That's great. Thank you for those. Um, okay, friends. Well, thank you so much for giving us such great insight into the major and your experiences. Uh, we're going to go ahead and shift now to questions that have come in from our wonderful um, participants. And um, it looks like we have lots of good ones to choose from. So I'll just start quickly for somebody who is not currently admitted to one of these majors. How difficult or common is it to transfer from letters and science into Rouser for CRS or EMF or any of the other majors? Sarah, maybe it makes sense for you to take that one to start. Yeah, absolutely. So I think the answer to that question differs whether you're a freshman or a transfer student. Um, for a freshman, you'll need to um, be um, establish yourself in your home college, and then um, you'll work towards the major requirements of either CRS or EMF, um, and then you'll be able to transfer to our college once you're ready to declare that major. So generally that means like sophomore, junior year, you'll come on over. Um, and in general, when we're changing between colleges, we um, want students to have a 3.0 GPA. Um, for transfer students, as you guys know, your timeline's a little bit more condensed. Um, 
So if you are a transfer student, let's talk now. Um, I want to make sure that you, you know, took the correct classes while you are at community college so that you can transfer over to um, CNR after your first semester at Berkeley. Great, thank you for that. And then um, to our students, um, thinking about your experience in classes, um, just sort of broadly, do you feel like being in Rouser College leads to a different experience in terms of how competitive classes are or are not? Um, we'd love to hear your experience um, in, in terms of enrollment and actually taking the courses. Um, and I'll leave it to you all, to whoever unmutes first, to go for it. <laughs> um, I guess I can start. Uh, so Rouser is one of the smaller colleges at Berkeley, so it really gives you that home away from home feeling. Berkeley is a really big school, so it's easy to feel like um, you're lost and like you don't know where you belong, but people in Rouser tend to be a lot more supportive of each other, as I've um, noticed, and like the faculty in Rouser are also really incredible and they're super passionate about what they do and they're so helpful when it comes to like supporting you like becoming um like the academic professional that you want to be so honestly like choosing rouser was the best um decision for me because it's just such a family tight-knit group of people yeah i'd like to add on that um something that a lot of students uh worry about when first coming to berkeley or first looking at berkeley is there's a, always a lot of um, talk about like grade deflation and like competitive classes, uh, which is something that I have not come across. Uh, um, I have not come across in CNR specifically. There are some other like larger departments in Berkeley that have certain policies, but in CNR, I have yet to come across a class where my uh, grade becomes deflated for some reason. Um, a lot of the courses do end up uh, having um, like a generous curve, depending on how students do on the exams and other uh, course material. It's always adjusted depending on how like students learned and how students did that semester. Um, so definitely um, in CNR, you won't feel too much of that. Um, you won't experience too much of the competitiveness that is, is often associated with Berkeley. Although class um, sizes can be really large, especially in like lower division classes, um, a lot of the time professors will encourage students to collaborate and study together because there isn't going to be a certain competition for like a letter grade or something like that. Yeah, um, I really agree with Isaac on the grade deflation. Um, my experiences with that have been within like mostly the other departments. Um, C our CNR has been very kind to me so far. Thus far, um, I'm like in my senior uh, career, I have come to, come to like a few bumps in the road at um, Cal, but the Cal, the advisors were always there to um, just anchor me and really support me and um, continuing my education at Berkeley, um, and are really great at connecting you to um, other resources that will help you if you are struggling with your classes. Um, there's a bunch of resources at Berkeley that could. Um, that you could lean on to um, to just support you with um, any concerns you have with your writing or um, math, like tutoring, and yeah. So uh, our CNR has just been really kind to me, and I just continue to praise uh, those our CNR ad, um, advisors and peer advisors for their like undying support. Love that. We're family friends. Join our family. Um, okay, I'd love to have keep our pals talking. Um, there are a couple of questions about the sort of extracurricular type of your experience. So, um, and some of this you spoke to in your introduction, but um, a question specifically about research and internship opportunities, um, and then also student clubs or organizations specifically related to the outdoors. Um, so maybe we'll combine those questions. And if you could just sort of elaborate on any research or internship opportunities you have engaged in, and then some of those clubs or organizations that are specifically more sort of um, environmental or outdoors focused. I'd love to hear a little bit more about that. Um, I will start with Nicole. Okay, um, so there's many ways to get involved in research at Berkeley. Two of the programs are URAP, Undergraduate Research Apprenticeship Program, and this is open campus-wide and you can apply to projects that faculty post on the website. And then for Rouser specifically, we have this program called SPUR, Sponsored Projects for Undergraduate Research, and this gives you like an additional three 
um, applications that you can send in for research positions. And you can also um, make a proposal for like your own student initiated project. I did both of them. I did UREP first and um, it was a great experience. I worked in a lab where uh, I was studying like the evolution of lizards in white sands, but I was studying like um, the diet of the lizards. So I did a lot of arthropod sorting and like pitfall traps and stuff. And then junior year, I moved on into my spur project, which was the comparative phylogeography of Lesser Antilles reptiles. So I focused on Thecodactylus repicauda, which is the turnip tailed gecko. So cute. Um, but I did a lot of genomic research with that. Um, also morphology, I had access to the Museum of Vertebrate Zoology um, and I did like CT scanning and measurements that way. Um, and outdoors clubs, I have one that I'd really like to recommend called Chaos. It's the California Hiking and Outdoors Club or Society, something like that. Um, it's a great way to find people who are interested in going on hikes or rock climbing and they have like um, gear that you can rent for $10. Like you pay like a $10 member fee and then you can like use it as much as you need. They have like a really cool um, shed of stuff. So highly recommend checking them out. I can share a little next. Um, yeah, there's always a lot of, um, there's definitely a lot of environmental related uh, student organizations on campus. Um, a big one, a big umbrella one is a student environmental resource center where you can find a lot of different departments and student organizations and just smaller clubs of students who are very interested in uh, environmental sustainability, um, especially there's a lot of initiatives going on around campus, even at the state level and local level as well that they are involved in. Um, and that's like a really great just umbrella organization where you can find a lot of opportunities to get involved. Um, there's also, as Nicole mentioned, a lot of just like outdoor related, uh, there's cow climbing, chaos, like she mentioned, um, and just like a lot of opportunities to just hang out with students outdoors and do, um, and just like have a lot of fun. Um, in terms of research, I started a, I started Spur Projects um, my sophomore year. The first one I did uh, was a macroinvertebrate identification project where we collected samples from uh, different streams around California, and I would kind of sort them underneath the microscope and ID them in order to look at the diversity and things like that. Um, and I did a similar project this, uh, the year after um, doing more macroinvertebrate sorting. Uh, this semester, I'm really excited where I started a project um, where I we're using uh, geographic information science in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem. And so we're mapping the fences in the region to look at how um, the dynamics of the fences affect the ecology of the migrations, as well as the land allotments and how grazing affects the area there as well. Um, so I've had a lot of fun in that project, learning how to use um, uh, different GIS programs in order to, uh, we're like uploading PDFs of images and tracing out boundaries and looking for fences in the imagery. So it's just been a lot of fun to explore that region virtually um, and map it out as well. And um, those are some of the things that I've done and I've been involved with. Um, but yeah, it's definitely been a lot of fun and there's, there are a lot of opportunities to get involved in at Berkeley. Uh, I also just wanna quickly add that um, CRS also has a CRSSO, which is a club specifically for CRS majors. That is um, a great place to just uh, talk about other people's um, majors and areas of focus um, because of being in Cal uh, and like RCNR, although it's very small, it could feel um, in a virtual setting very isolating. Um, and our uh, CRSSO has done a great job this sem this these pa this semester in the pandemic uh, and in the pandemic at uh, meeting and just you would also you'd be also like um, organized to do like senior projects um to to for crs when you graduate they have like very specific q um graduation alternative that you could attend um so if you were look if you're looking for another community at cal that um is within your major as well crs is so is a great place to look into and um i haven't i've i the i haven't done any research at berkeley thus far but I would um, recommend looking into field study classes because they, they do have opportunities um, for you 
to do internships and um, just oh, just community and um, on hand work at Cal rather than in classroom um, work. That's great. Thank you all so much for that. Um, and then I love there are a couple of questions. Oh, Sarah, say words. Yes. Oh, yes. I just wanted to build off of something Theodora said. She mentioned um, CRS is so organized the alternative graduation in which um, we have a CRS graduation where students give plants um, rather than paper as um, a diploma. Um, and then I also wanted to highlight our forestry club, which Isaac kind of touched on um, a little bit earlier, but they meet every week and um, they do fun sharings like tree of the week and like female environmentalist of the week. Um, but then they also organize um, um, like pre preventative um, or prescription burns and they'll like go up to Fort Bragg and do like really cool tree work up there. Go over to one of our um, forest um, service research centers and do like work over at Blodgett. Um, and then they also um, organize like our Christmas tree sale which um, the forestry club raises money by um, selling Christmas trees to the community. Yay, thank you for that. And then we have a couple of questions about area of interest. And so I'm going to sort of combine them into one super question. So one is, um, because you have the area of interest, do you feel like that gives you too much flexibility? Does it ever feel like they're like, how do I narrow it down and create an area of interest? Um, and then how do you determine your area of interest courses? Does that happen in SBUM 90? Does your degree get renamed based on your area of interest? So sort of generally around how the area of interest gets constructed and can it be overwhelming if you have the whole campus to choose from? And I'm gonna let Nicole uh, take this one. Yeah, so um, SPM 90 is the introduction to your major class that every CRS student takes. And that's where you kind of flesh out an idea of what you want your AOI to be. And I decided on wildlife conservation and management after taking um, SPM C103 conservation biology and SPM 114 wildlife ecology. Those classes really stood out to me and I just wanted to learn more about um, the organismal level of ecosystems. and the flexibility for me was like what really appealed to me about the major. Um, you can really customize your major to what you're interested in. And um, just because you like write out an AOI statement in SPM 90, that doesn't mean like when you're graduating, that's your final AOI. Um, I've certainly made some changes in my AOI as the years have gone. And like, yeah, <laughs> it's just, there's a lot of support for you. Like Sarah is an amazing advisor. She'll help walk you through like how to pick classes. Faculty are also available to talk to. Like they have great class recommendations as well. And your peers, your um, major peers and your pals as well, we're here to help. So in the interest in time, I'm not gonna ask for everyone's answer to that. I'm gonna um, do a couple of questions related to um, how CRS in particular compares to other environmental science majors, um, either in Rouser or like the environmental earth science major in LNS. Um, can you double in those? What would that look like? So I don't know, Sarah, if you're able to speak to that sort of how does CRS fit into the larger environmental science landscape um, at Berkeley? Yeah, so I think that there are like many different ways in which you can focus on environmental studies at Berkeley, um, even just within our own college, as you can see, you know, we have lots of majors focused in it. Um, I would say that like CRS um, differs from like something like environmental science in the sense that like environmental science is um, very focused on um, the science side and like the research project that you are re required to do. Um, and so they give you a lot of um, structure and support in doing that. But when you have a lot of structures in support in focusing on research, you then kind of lose some of the flexibility. And that's where something like CRS or ecosystem management and forestry natural resource specialization comes in is that you have that space to really explore and deep dive into like what you want to focus in and like really be the pilot in your educational journey. That's great, thank you. And then a couple maybe sort of more targeted professional questions. Um, uh, let's see, where was I going? Actually, do you know what, um, Isaac, did you go to forestry camp? And if you did, what was your experience? So I have not gone to forestry camp. I have heard from a lot of my friends that, um, that forestry camp is definitely an amazing experience. A lot of people say it's like one of their favorite um, experiences and classes that they take at Berkeley. Another option for the EMF major that I have been considering is the Morea program. Um, which is you, you go for a semester to uh, French Polynesia to conduct your own research project. 
and that's something that um, I might be doing this upcoming fall. I'm still waiting on more decisions to see if that's something that's available for me. Um, but yeah, the, the Morea program is another option for the natural resource uh, concentration track um, that you can do in the EMF major. And I've actually been to forestry camp. Um, so it's kind of a tradition that the um, ecosystem management and forestry advisor goes up during the summer, um, during phase two enrollment and um, is living in the forest for a couple of days with them. Um, and it's honestly like breathtaking. You're staying in these cabins and like the sense of camaraderie that occurs at camp is just wonderful because you guys are like just out amongst the trees learning about fire ecology and indigenous um, fire practices and forest health and bark beetles and you're just like in there like with you know 30 or 40 other students and um, you become part of a larger world of the Cal um, Forestry Camp alumni and the alumni all come and it's like a whole big party um, and then you have that kind of built-in sense of um, connection and honestly if you say you went to Cal Forestry Camp like people know what that is in this industry um, so it's really, really cool. Um, and it's um, been going for, you know, 100 years. And the only time we've had to cancel it was World War One and World War Two. So fun fact. Okay, thank you. And then we just have a couple minutes. Let me make sure. Um, so a question about changing into Rouser that maybe will be a good one for us to, to end on um, is if you are a freshman and maybe you're coming from letters and science, do you still benefit from the small college community even if you weren't admitted directly into Rouser? So if you wanna speak a little bit to um, our community, which we touched on a little earlier, but maybe that will help we bookend our session. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, just because you're not a Rouser College student doesn't mean that we're not here for you. I meet with prospective students all the time. I'll meet with people in freshman year. And then even though I'm not officially their advisor, they still come and they see me and they still come and see Craig and they talk to all of our peer advisors. Um, and so you still get to benefit from that small community feel because eventually you'll be part of our family. Okay, if nobody else is going to say words, I'll just keep, I'll see if we can cram one more question in. Um, and then let's see, Craig is saying things. Um, oh, about the major size. Okay. Um, so let's see. Oh, Nicole, do you want to talk about law school? If you want to go to law school, does it dramatically change what courses you take? Um, and if not, how are you sort of tailoring yourself to prepare for that as an ultimate step or, you know, a next step for your planning? Yeah, so for law school, there aren't like prerequisite classes that you need to take like med school um, or other graduate programs like that. Um, it's more about developing yourself and getting ready for um, what you're going to be doing like in law school. So like more so the skills and like the knowledge and like how to talk and like argue and like just read and <laughs> things like that. Um, I'm like oversimplifying it, but I took classes to like help define what I'm passionate about. And like, yeah, there isn't really like a set track you have to take with that. Great, thank you for that. Yeah, it's very different from something like pre-health where there's like a really specific set of requirements. Um, Pre-law as Nicole articulated very well is about preparing yourself to do all of these other sort of skill-based things. Um, and then um, we have a question that's specific about city and regional planning. Um, can, do these majors make sense in that kind of career, career trajectory? Yeah, so because CRS is, once again, an individualized interdisciplinary major who can take classes all across campus, I totally have students that are focusing in city planning and how to like, you know, think in terms of the environment and how we plan cities. Um, I have students that are focused in like urban community building and like how to um, create more access in that sense. Um, and so those students spend a lot of time taking classes in the College of Env Environmental Design, but they still have access to it. Um, there's some really cool classes over there. And I think maybe we have to stop talking now. Um, there's another question about double majoring with environmental science or maybe changing from a major to something more broad like environmental science. Um, maybe just in 30 seconds, Sarah, can do people do that? Do they double with ES and one or both of these majors? What does that look like? Yeah, so I think my biggest um, piece of advice for students who are wanting to double major, I wanna know why you're wanting to double major. You know, what is this additional major gonna bring to you? Cause you're adding a whole lot of more requirements onto your plate. And sometimes when students add more requirements onto their plate, that means they have to take away cool field studies classes. 
internships, research, which is like, that's the experience that you build in college. That's what, you know, is going to help you grow. And that's what employers are going to want to see. Do I, you know, say absolutely no double majors? No, I have tons of students that do double majors, but it's more about like, think about why you're wanting to do this. Yes, thank you. And friends, it is now time. Um, I just want to thank Sarah and our pals and Craig so much. Um, you know, it's a very busy time of year for our pals. So it's it's just so wonderful that they spent um, this time because they just love working with students so much um, and helping to answer questions. So um, Craig has posted our contact information in the chat. Um, and we really hope that we see you in the fall and that you have a great evening and go Bears. Yes, go Bears. Happy Cow Week. <laughs>